So in our last videos, we've talked about uh, we've talked about hyperbolic functions. We talked about their graphs, what they look like, their domains and ranges. We've talked about some really interesting identities, and now we're going to talk about the calculus of our hyperbolic hyperbolic functions. The calculus of hyperbolic functions, and I bet most of you are waiting for that. You're probably feeling a little left out that we haven't really talked about any calculus. This is probably a review for many of you, and the calculus is going to be your derivatives and integrals. So um, I'm going to discuss in this video our derivative rules and then our integral rules because they work in tandem very similar to our, our trigonometric identities, our trigonometric uh, derivatives and integrals. So I'm going to hit those all at once. There are inverse trig, there are inverse hyperbolic uh, derivatives and integrals. I'm not going to cover that in this video. Um, I'm going to let you guys try a couple of those examples at home. However, I'm not going to highly emphasize inverse hyperbolic integrals and derivative rules. So I just don't find those as important. So let's go ahead and just talk about how to calculate some of these derivatives. So let's say that we want to calculate the derivative of cosh of x. So this would be the derivative of its definition, which is going to be e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2. We can pull that constant out, d dx of e to the x plus d dx of e to the negative x, and this is going to be all times that value of 1 half. So this will equal to 1 half. Derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Derivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. And hopefully we all recognize this is e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2, and this is hyperbolic sign. How easy was that? Easy derivatives, pretty rapid, pretty simple, nothing that's too complex. How about now you go ahead and pause this video and determine what the derivative of inverse cinch, I'm sorry, the derivative of cinch is. Hopefully you're back now, so we're just going to go ahead and write out this derivative, and I'm going to do this, oh I just lost that up there, so hopefully you have that in your notes. My computer is a little ridiculous, so I'm just going to have to skip that and just say it's cinch. If you want to see that again, just rewind back a couple seconds. So here we're going to have, here we're going to have e to the x minus e to the negative x all over 2. We're going to take the derivative of the numerator by piece, pull that constant one half out in front. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of e to the negative x with a subtraction will give you a positive e to the negative x. And this is going to be e to the x plus e to the negative x. And this is all divided by 2. And hopefully we see this is equal to cosh of x. So I know with our trigonometric identities, the derivative of sine is positive cosine, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. But with our hyperbolic derivatives, derivative both cosine and sine have positive derivative outcomes. So be very cognizant about that. But hopefully, you can just use the definitions and derive them themselves. So, uh, so keep that in mind. I think that's relatively uh, something that's relatively easy to work with. Let's go ahead and try proving the derivative of tangent, ta hyperbolic tangent. And I, oops, hyperbolic tangent, not tangent. So hopefully you recognize this is going to be cinch all over cosh. So when we take this derivative, we're going to have to use the quotient rule. So we're going to have cosh, right, so the denominator times the derivative of the numerator times the derivative of cinch. I think I just lost something. Here we go, d dx. I don't know why, it's just deleting things on me. So here, then we're going to have minus the numerator, which is going to be cinch times the derivative of the denominator, all over cosh squared. So now let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. We're going to have our cosh, derivative of cinch is cosh, minus cinch. This cinch times the derivative of cosh is cinch. Again, these are positive. And this is going to be all over cosh squared. Cosh squared minus cinch squared. Hopefully we recognize that's one of those very interesting 
identities that we really, really want to focus upon. That's going to be equal to the value of 1 cosh, minus, cosh squared minus sin squared is the value of 1 all over, whoops, all over cosh squared of x. And this is equal to, this is going to be equal to hyperbolic secant squared of x. So hyperbolic secant squared of x. So I think that's a relatively easy proof. All of these are relatively easy to do. So let's go ahead and cover these and derivative rules just to make it easy on ourselves. Let's look at cinch. I like doing them like this because positives end up on top and the negatives are on the bottom. So, so I like these three up here because they're positive. So this is going to be cosh of x. This one is going to be cinch of x. And this one's going to be hyperbolic secant squared of x. So these next ones are going to be the negatives. So we're going to have the derivative, and you can write this in any way, of hyperbolic cotangent, the derivative of hyperbolic secant, and then the derivative of hyperbolic cosecant. And these ones are the negative, but still have that same relationship of what we saw in, in calculus one. So if derivative tangent is secant squared, derivative co hyperbolic cotangent is going to be negative hyperbolic cosecant squared. And derivative of secant, remember going back to derivative of secant with secant tangent, derivative of secant hyperbolic secant is going to be negative. It's co negative secant hyperbolic secant of h tangent hyperbolic hyperbolic tangent of h. I'm just getting these all tongue twisted. Of tan hyperbolic tangent of x hyperbolic secant of x times hyperbolic tangent of x. There we go. I got it said right. And then lastly, derivative of cosecant hyperbolic cosecant is going to be negative negative hyperbolic cosecant of x times hyperbolic cotangent of x. So, so these are going to be our, um, our derivative rules. So these three on top, I group them, sine, cosine, tangent, they're positive outcomes. These ones have negatives. So hopefully we can look at the integral of cosh of x, the integral of cosh of x, dx, I should have a dx in here somewhere. There we go. <laughs> this will equal to hyperbolic sine of x plus a constant. Let's go backwards. I integral of hyperbolic cinch. Hyperbolic sine is going to be hyperbolic cosine plus a constant. And then integral of hyperbolic secant squared of x dx is in fact hyperbolic tangent of x plus a constant. So the same thing holds when you integrate, when you integrate positive hyperbolic cosecant squared of x dx, this will equal to negative hyperbolic cotangent of x plus a constant. If we integrate positive hyperbolic secant of x times positive hyperbolic tangent of x, this will equal to negative hyperbolic secant of x plus a constant. And then lastly, if we integrate hyperbolic cosecant of x times hyperbolic cotangent of x, this will give us negative co hyperbolic cosecant of x plus a constant. So these are the basic driven integral rules that I really want us to focus upon and emphasize in this, in this section. These are, are important for us to know. They are slightly different from our regular trigonometric rules, but hopefully we can memorize them pretty fast. And uh, let's go ahead and try some examples. Let's go ahead and try some examples. So I want you guys to maybe try this example out and see how you do. And let's go ahead and take the derivative of hyperbolic cosine of 3x to the fourth. So pause this video and see how you do. And hopefully, hopefully uh, you will be able to figure this one out. So in this circumstance, hopefully we're recognizing this is another form of our, of our uh, derivation involving 
a special chain rule. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of cosh. Hopefully we recognize the derivative of cosh as cinch of that argument, but now we have to multiply it times the derivative of that argument. So this will be equal to 12x cubed cinch of 3x to the fourth. I think this is relatively easy. We're going to invoke the same derivative rules. I'm not going to focus a lot upon this at this point because I really want us to focus upon, say, be some integration. So let's go ahead and try integrating cinch to the fifth of x cosh of x dx. So hopefully we're recognizing this is going to be a u substitution. So we're going to let u equal to cinch of x Therefore, du equals to cosh of x dx. This will be my perfect du right here. And then this one will be my u. So this will, in fact, equal to u to the fifth du, which will be 1 sixth u to the sixth plus the constant. But we must transform back to our original hyperbolic function which will be 1 6 cinch to the 6th power of x plus a constant of integration. So I think that's a, a relatively nice problem for us to work with. Nothing that's too difficult. Let's try some derivations, maybe some integrals that we're not as familiar with. Maybe we can look at uh, integral of tanch. So let's go ahead and look at integral of tanch. I like just to write this in terms of cinches and cosh trying to pluralize these so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna let u equal to our denominator then our du equals to our derivative I'm sorry equals to basically our our numerator derivative of cosh is cinch so this will equal to the integral of du over u which is the natural log of the magnitude of u plus a constant, but we just start off in terms of u's, we start off in terms of, of cautious and cinches and x's, so actually we start off in terms of tangent, so this will be the natural log of the magnitude of cosh of x plus a constant. So, so these are very nice, um, I feel really good about this, but just make sure to remember that cosh, that cosh is positive, so remember what cosh looks like, our graph of cosh, it is basically a parabola shifted up, and it has those special curvy linear, curvy linear asymptotes of one half e to the x and one half e to the negative x. So, uh, so this will in fact be written as the natural log of cosh plus a constant. No need for absolute value signs because we recognize cosh is always positive. I think that this is a really good practice of using your hyperbolic function derivative integral rules. I am not going to focus highly upon the inverse hyperbolic derivative integral rules. I find that to be just slightly excessive at this point. So uh, I would definitely focus a majority of your studies on the on the regular hyperbolics.